Female Teacher in Special Classroom. Author, Agam Mora. Cross Dress Small World, Final Part, Either Way, I'll Always Be Your Homeroom Teacher. I am Deva, a teacher who has just been dismissed from school after less than a year since graduating from the Pedagogical University. Looks like I'm the most failed teacher in history, huh? And yet, I don't feel too lost. At least I did my best, it's just that my status is too low in this society. However, I'm not such a quiet man. I don't like getting in trouble, but I'm not afraid of trouble at all. I will not beg to be kept in school, but I will not be merciful enough to forgive those who trample on me. They insult my honor. I can accept it. But this is indirectly related to the honor of 10D students, so I decided not to ignore it. It didn't take me too long to figure out the cause of this mess. The Lynch family didn't bother to hide their bad behavior. They consider themselves a powerful man and despise a little low-key man like me. But sorry, they were wrong. Maybe I can't make the Lynch family fall but I'm still possible to cause them a little damage. Don't forget, even a mouse can knock an elephant down. I don't have a way to save my own honor and the honor of my students, but I do have a way to help them vent their anger. I am currently in front of Thousand Roses Company Building, which is also the owner of my favorite women's clothing stores. I enjoy the service and attitude of the employees of the stores of Thousand Roses Company. So, when I can't be a teacher anymore, the first place I think about is them. I want to use a little bit of my knowledge to help them develop. At the same time, I also want to use them to weaken the Lynch family's unique position in the fashion business. To avoid losing time, I use the rights of close clients to meet with the manager of the company. With the business knowledge I have acquired over the years, I present my opinion to him briefly. Unexpectedly, he was very interested and decided to take me straight to the company's president, after receiving permission from the director team. Mr. Colt looked surprised when his clients at his stores were a man so he asked me about it. I don't mind telling him the whole story from the time I came to this city. After listening to my story, Mr. Colt showed great admiration for my will. He promised to help me to the end even though his chances of getting past the Lynch family's company were almost zero. With the initial convenience, my comb is easily recognized and implemented by the members of the company. I have a very broad knowledge of business, plus recently I have studied very thoroughly about women's costumes so I quickly caught up with a trend. I plan everything from the import of goods according to the needs of women to the future development directions. After only one month, Thousand Roses' sales were balanced with the Lynch family. What's more surprising, the one who I think will very hate me, is the Black Pearl Gang's leader, Dax, which actively helps me. I don't know how he could know my behavior, but I don't care. I also do not foolishly refuse to benefit from the huge relationships with Dax's enterprises. Following this momentum, the Lynch family will gradually decline, giving way to Thousand Roses' comprehensive development. Of course, this made Mr. Colt very happy. At first, I just wanted to take a little bit of Lynch family market to make them lose a large amount of income, but I didn't expect at the end. The Lynch family fell in such pain. In short, my goal has been a great success. I originally just wanted to fulfill my wish and help Mr. Colt instead of thanking him but I have no intention of working here for a long time. I plan to go back to my hometown to meet my parents and then find a good job there. I don't want to stay in this city anymore. I want to forget all. Hillel is extremely angry. For the first time in his life, he was slapped by his father, and was slapped twice. But he didn't have a chance to blame his father because his father was in far more danger now than he was. Walking along the school hallway, Hillel realized something was wrong. The students in the school are talking about something. 
someone even pointed at him with their finger. But it didn't take long for Hillel to find the answer. A news came out this morning on the school's social media with a headline, The Noble Act of Mr. Deva. The small-minded guy behind it deserves to be condemned. The content of the article sheds light on Mr. Deva's actions. He dresses like a girl purely for good purposes, not for seducing students like the rumors before. More remarkably, the person who spreads rumors and humiliates Mr. Deva is known as Hillel. In this article, there is also an apology from the author to Mr. Deva. When Hillel saw the author's name, his blood is boiling, because it was Billy. This bastard betrayed him. Just one article from the person who distributed the photos of Mr. Deva, the public opinion suddenly changed. Currently, Mr. Deva's honor has been regained and Hillel is being criticized everywhere. All because of this one article. Hillel quickly ran to meet Billy. It's not hard to meet Billy because he's usually only in a fixed place in the schoolyard. Hillel shouted at Billy, Why did you do that? You took my money, now you hurt me. Billy grinning softly, Calm down. You're always so angry, no wonder why you've fallen from grace. Hillel's fist in Billy's face caused him to fall to the ground. After that, Hillel scolded. If you do that, your reputation will be as bad as mine. You will also have a bad reputation for working with me to humiliate Mr. Deva. Billy's mouth was bleeding, but he kept a smile on his lips. Do you think I've had a good reputation in this school so far? Since I decided to do this work of tracking, I've decided to trade everything for money. Just get the right amount of money, I'll do even the dirtiest things. Unfortunately, another person paid me a larger amount to write a vindication article for Mr. Deva, and at the same time, he also returned double the amount you gave me, as a contract-breaking fee. Hillel asked, who? Billy replied with only two words, Dante Larson. Hillel didn't ask any more questions, he just dropped his face, walked silently toward the school gate. It's over. Even without his father's incident, Hillel has no face to continue his studies at this school. Carrie and Dante are now sitting in front of Deva's old apartment door. According to the landlord, Mr. Deva moved out from the time he was fired from X High School. It has been more than a month since then, but Carrie and Dante come here every afternoon. They hope that if they stay here, Deva will return and they will see their lovely homeroom teacher again. But the more they waited, the more they were sad. Carrie told Dante, perhaps thanks to Billy's article, Miss Davis' honor has been restored. You've fulfilled your promise. I feel so useless, there's nothing I can do to help her. Dante patted Carrie on the shoulder, did you forget that it was you who found out that Billy was the one who distribute that photos? I simply used the money to change the outcome. Carrie was silent and said nothing. It was true that Carrie had found the mastermind who did the harm, but he knew that if he hadn't done it, Dante would have found it himself. But Carrie didn't mean to deny Dante's words either. He wanted to accept that, so that he felt that he had contributed to helping Deva. At this moment, Dante's phone rang. When he knew the caller was his father, Dante quickly picked up the phone. Through the phone call, Dante learned that Miss Deva's problem had been solved, and Miss Deva could return to school if he wanted to. Dante was thrilled to hear that. He was not happy that his father respected him, he was just happy for his homeroom teacher. Besides, from information provided by Mr. Nash, Dante knows that Deva currently holds an important position in Thousand Roses Company. Having a clue, Dante urged Carrie to run all the way to Thousand Roses Company to find Deva. As the son of one of the city's leaders, Dante did not find it difficult to meet the company's management. From the manager's words, Carrie and Dante knew that Deva had resigned from his job and was planning to return to his hometown, probably departing today. Without much thought, they both rushed to the bus station with last hope. 
Arriving at the bus station, they were happy when they found a familiar figure sitting in the row waiting for the bus to arrive. No one else, that's their beautiful female homeroom teacher. They both called out to Deva from a distance and ran really fast towards him. The movement was so loud that Deva, even if he didn't want to, had to pay attention to the sound of calling his name. Deva looked up and saw two of his students, he was greatly surprised. Why are they here? Having not thought much, they both rushed into Deva like two children. They hugged Deva tightly, making it difficult for him to breathe, but he didn't push them out either. After the tearful reunion, Deva asked, Why are you here? Carrie replied, We are looking for you to inform you, you have been whitewash, the principal has allowed you to return to school. I was a little surprised, ah, really? Dante giggled and said, We also contributed a lot, please praise us. Again, these two demanded praise like two children. But Deva also did not feel antipathy. The feeling of belonging came back, making him remember when they both went to his apartment to attend extra class. Deva also gave a smile, All right, you two are good. Carrie asked, But, even though you don't teach us now, you still wear women's clothes? Yes, Deva is now in the form of a girl. Deva nodded, Yes, I was in such a hurry that my men's clothes hadn't been washed yet. Deva also had no intention of buying another man's outfit to wear while his old clothes were not washed. Simply because he feels, being a girl is not bad. He has no regrets, no shame, wearing women's clothes has been a part of his beautiful life. Carrie chuckled, then went on to say, but that's better. I want to see your beauty. Dante said, so are you coming back with us? Deva suddenly into a state of thinking. Indeed, Deva is hesitating. Although he would love to see the 10D students again, partly he doesn't want to be a teacher anymore. That incident more or less affected Deva. Witnessing Deva's hesitation, Carrie said, Don't you remember what you said to us? Deva broke out of his thoughts. He replied, What? Dante replied on behalf of Carrie, Either way. I'll always be your homeroom teacher. Deva suddenly startled to hear this statement again. Isn't this the last sentence Deva left before he left? Deva shook his head, then looked forward as if he had thought it through. That's right, what else am I hesitant about? Deva looked directly into the eyes of the two students, Okay, I won't break my promise to you. I'll always be your homeroom teacher. The three of them happily left the bus station and went back to school. Deva said to himself, perhaps his journey as a female teacher in a special class will continue. The End Today's story would like to stop here. Thank you for watching. Please like and share for people with similar interests to motivate me to develop my channel. Goodbye and see you in another story.